Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this actually little guy right here. This is the TJ Schwartz Overland Sport Knife. Um, very, very interesting little piece, and a sequel to a knife that I've had previously on the channel, the uh, TJ Schwartz Overland. Very, very interesting. So, um, yeah, we're going to go on ahead and take a look at it here today. Um, but before I go any further, I do want to let you know that these guys were sent to me by TJ himself. He reached out to me after I had taken a look at the, uh, the, 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 the full-size Overland and says, Hey, hey, you want to take a look at the smaller one, and, uh, well, given these, yes, absolutely, I do want to take a look at the smaller one. But I told him, as always, I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. It might be a gem, it might be junk. He still did send it along. Nonetheless, we do have to assume these are the very best quality controlled ones of these guys ever, and I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature or the quality of my review. First off, let's do some size comparison real quick, just so you have a sense of how actually relatively small these are. Uh, here we have this little guy, the uh, Spydeco Delica, and we're going to see here that actually it's right around that same size. The uh, handle of it is a little smaller than the Delica, but the sharpened blade length is a little bit longer. Right here it is against the Ontario Rat Number 2, and again, we're going to see it's in that same size class. We put it up here against the Spydeco PM2, and we're going to see that, uh, yeah, this is a pretty small knife. Then finally, I do want to do the comparison against its big brother, right, the Overland Non-Sport the Overland sit at home and work on the computer, I suppose. Um, look, I, I don't know what a non-sport uh, sort of thing is, but either way, um, uh, what we can see here is that there is absolutely 100% a familial relationship, right? Uh, this is the big boy, this is the the, the kid, right? And that's kind of cool, right? It is nice that you get a, a size choice there of what is actually, I think, a very, very compelling design. There are some differences, though. We want to make clear that, you know, it's not just exactly the same thing scaled down. For instance, there is not this second little finger area here, which given might not have made sense on something as small as this guy. We also do see some additional kind of contouring of the handle here, which I think actually works well, which I think looks pretty nice. But we see that there are some differences here, but the familial resemblance is... Um, well, completely and totally clear. Uh, one question people might ask is, who the heck is TJ Schwartz? Well, TJ Schwartz is actually one of the more exciting knife designers out there these days. Um, he's been doing really interesting work for a bunch of different folks. He's well known for, uh, well, uh, creating a bunch of knives. He's done a bunch of knives with CRKT uh, th that he's had made overseas with them. He's, uh, I believe, was the designer of the Koenig Arius uh, Millet Torrent, a couple of other really interesting. He's got one recently came out with Tactile uh, Knife. He's a, a designer that's very prolific and is very much, you know, popular out there in the knife world, but these are knives that he's making on his own, in his shop, right? If you follow him on social media, you'll see, you know, posts about him pulling larger and larger CNC machines into his garage, which good on you, man. Uh, but he has been working on these out of his own home uh, there in, in the Idaho, and so these are very much American-made and very much made by TJ himself. Uh, he may have other employees, I'm not 100% sure, but these are very much a TJ Schwartz kind of thing. So these are being made by TJ. And uh, by the way, one quick note, I have two of them here. This one here is a Lona. In case you were wondering whether the uh, flat, you know, coyote, uh, or flat dark earth, I suppose, and the, uh, the bright orange were my style. No, they're not. But that's okay, right? Uh, <laughs> these are very much another one that he wanted to send along, just so I can show off the... Um, the uh, blade coating sort of thing that he's able to do. So uh, that's why I have two different ones of these on the table, uh, but they are the same model, just two different sets of options there. So anyways, uh, let's go on ahead and jump into uh, what's good and what's not so good about this guy. I'm not doing a full review because honestly, I'm not a super strong fixed blade person. I use fixed blades, usually out in the garden and things like that. In fact, I have been putting this guy through its paces. That's why you're going to see the edge on this is not a factory edge. The edge that comes from the factory is very nice. It looks great, but it is not the same mirror polish thing. I actually put this on during my review with a Hapstone RS. But anyways, this is not a factory edge for this particular knife. It is, uh, well, <laughs> it is its own little thing right there. So uh, anyways, that's what we're going to go on ahead and do and talk about the good and the not so good here. On the good side, I got to say ergonomically, this works really well for me. I have relatively small hands, and so a relatively small knife is going to work well, but just overall in the hand, it works, right? You have a nice area here. You've got plenty of grip down here. You have enough palm swell here that it feels pretty natural, and this little groove actually is nice for helping your fingers find 
find the, the right location. The jimping is in the right place here to feel like I've got a very secure grip. And then also, I gotta say, there's this little area here, which I don't know if it was intended this way or if it's just a happy accident, but makes it a lot easier for sharpening uh, because this little area here, which is kind of in line with the edge, uh, isn't high, therefore you can get a little bit lower as you're sharpening down there. It's a little touch that actually makes a lot of sense and feels very, very nice. It is definitely an improvement when you have the sharpened edge coming this far down below the handle. So, all that said, ergonomically, these work very, very nicely in my hand. You can also come in and use that area for a second grip here, gripping with your fingers on either side there. If you want to get down. And then also, uh, this has a pretty good, because the, the handle is raised up above the blade, see if I can show this off here, you can actually get pretty close to the surface you're cutting without a whole lot of difficulty, right? This isn't necessarily the knife I would choose in the kitchen, but at the same time, you know what? It works just fine as a kitchen knife, right? It, it, it does the trick, particularly because of this sort of sheep's footy style blade. Yeah, it's more shapey than warny, but uh, and it allows you to get down on a cutting board if you need to. In a lot of ways, that was one of the nicest parts about the Overland here, is it does have a lot of versatility in its gription, and this guy feels very much the same. So I very much do appreciate that. The ergonomics on this are good. The steel on this guy is uh, Magna Cut. Uh, and Magna Cut is, of course, probably the most hyped steel out there at the moment. But that doesn't mean it's bad. In fact, I would argue it's a pretty damn solid steel. And more importantly, well, most steels are solid, let's be real here, but it, it works very, very well. And it's been heat treated well, from, um, from my impression of it, right? This is a knife that kept a very sharp edge, even as I have been beating the crap out of this. This little guy, I kind of made a conscious effort to beat the crap out of, because I figured TJ would want it uh, that way, right? Um, and so I took this guy out into the garden, and I left it in the dirt overnight, and, you know, I, I did overnight, well, over a number of nights. It wasn't like gingerly placing it out there at 7 p.m., tucking it into a little... Anyways, I digress. I also have been using this guy a fair amount. I uh, Because I live here in the San Diego, the regular plants, they tend to not have, you know, water and things like that. And plants like water, so I tend to grow succulents. So there's a lot of lava rock involved. And so I'm cutting in to try and get under roots to pull off pups of these things and, you know, hitting lava rocks. And although certainly there was some edge damage from cutting into a lava rock, like, yeah, that's not on the knife, but it, everything else worked very, very well, right? Uh, and so I've actually been very happy with the performance of this steel, both in terms of edge retention, in terms of sharpening, it sharpened up quite nicely, as well as in terms of uh, toughness, right? Even beating it up a little bit, it didn't crack, it didn't break, it just, there was a little bit of dulling, a little bit of removal of the apex there. Uh, that's what happens when you push a knife into a lava rock like that. So, um, yeah, despite my doing relatively unkind things to this, and by the way, not a hint of corrosion, because Magna Cut is one of those steels that is just functionally not going to corrode. I'm sure that if you really tried, you know, the chemists in the room are salivating to prove me wrong, I'm sure you can, but it's just not a factor, right? I, I feel like I, I don't have to worry about corrosion at all with the Magna Cut. And so I think that's a very nice thing. And it feels like it's been done very well. It's been heat treated very well. So I appreciate that very much. The uh, edge coming from the factory is quite sharp, actually. Um, you know, just touching this guy, which I have not been beating up on because this is a Lona designed to show off a different approach here. Uh, this is a quite sharp edge. I'm quite content with that edge. And uh, although I put a much more polished one on this guy, uh, that's not saying the original is not a good edge. The factory edge was great. Um, I have absolutely no complaints about that. The sheath on these guys is interesting. This is very, very much a pocket sheath, right? What we see here is that uh, the clip is technically on the wrong side, so I am right-handed. So if I wanted to put this on a belt, I would put it on this side, right? It would be on the left side, and that's the way that my... Um, that's the way that my original uh, Overland is configured, right? The clips are kind of on the opposite side for the knife. But uh, the reason this is done in this way is so that you can actually clip this into your pocket here. These little utility clip or alta clip... Ah, come on, open, you little bugger. All right. Why do you carry a pry bar, Nick? Well, to open the clip of this knife, uh, among many things. But anyways, this little clip here allows you to put this guy, uh, you basically slide this down into your pocket, and here, I'll put a knife in it, and that'll probably make it a little easier. You slide this guy down into your pocket, and then get the fabric of your pocket in here, and then 
torque it down as so. And then what you have basically is the pocket level is right here and then you've got this little fixed blade sticking up at the top. And because this is a relatively thin sheath, little piece of Kydex, by the way, with venting, a little weird in a pocket sheath, I'm going to be real, like, I mean, it makes sense, right? Like, that way the water goes through into your pocket. Um, that's maybe a question one might ask, but at the same time, I get why it's done, right? It makes sense in every other context, just a little weird for a pocket knife. Uh, a pocket knife, I suppose. I guess it's also a pocket knife. Anyways, moving on. Uh, but this allows you to put this guy into and out of your pocket. And then when you want to reach down and grab the knife, you just do that. You just grab here. No freaking problem. So uh, it does allow you to carry this guy in your pocket in a plausible and reasonable way. Uh, it takes up a lot of pocket real estate. That is for very much sure. And it also does have a fair amount of, like, you know, th this guy is taking up most of the entrance of your pocket. Uh, you can kind of get behind it, which is the nice part about this being a relatively thin sheath. Slip your hand in behind it. I am not a big fan of pocket fixed blades, being completely honest with you. That form factor drives me a little bit crazy. Um, I would much rather have something that is belt mounted, uh, but of course there's nothing stopping you from doing that. There's nothing stopping you from buying a different kind of mounting hardware and putting it on this sheath, right? The sheath is just using well, holes, right? So you could if you wanted to get something else, but nonetheless, it feels reasonable to have it configured in this way for folks who are very much into pocket carry uh, as they're getting started there. So that's a very nice thing. Uh, other things that are really, I mean, it's a fixed blade, so at some level, there's not a whole lot you got to say about it, Um, but there are some other nice details here, right? I do very much like not only the fact that the liners are a little shadow boxed, and that can sometimes be a hot spot nightmare, but the way that he has done it is that you have these liners and then you have a bevel on the blade itself, which then leads up to this spine here. So as a result, you end up with sort of a contoured surface, even though the blade is, well, the, the steel is very clearly sticking out there. By the way, this is a full tang knife. I mean, that's pretty apparent, I think, to anybody looking, but we can see that the steel here extends all the way far back, which is a nice thing. And also these uh, scales are, in theory, replaceable if you wanted to. That's kind of cool. But anyways, um, th that shadow boxing, I think, leads an attractive effect. And then I gotta say also, look at the, the jimping here. You have that same sort of situation where you have a bevel along the side of the jimping, giving you lots and lots of friction, but really not a lot of tearing at your thumb or your finger. This is very comfortable and very nice in the hand to use. TJ has a generally great sense of ergonomics, and I think this shows that. Otherwise, see here, you got a maker's mark on there, which is just fine. And you got all kinds of other little tiny details, right? Having these little brass collars in there. And when you custom order it, you get to choose the color. So this is black with black there, whereas this is silver with uh, gold sort of order. You get all the various canvas colors that your uh, micata colors, that is, that you can choose, as well as your G10s and things like that. And you also do get to configure other things, right? So this is an example, as I mentioned, of the uh, Cerakote style uh, coating on there. And it's applied very nicely, actually. You can still see the maker's mark, so it hasn't flooded that completely. There's really no complaints with this at all. It looks quite good. I have no no beef whatsoever with this coating. It's not something that personally I would do. I tend to prefer a shiny metal, but I can understand for somebody who is, well, either aesthetically or wanting something less reflective, um, that that might make some sense for them, right? So it, it's nice that you've got those options, and it is very much customizable. You can go in and pick out whatever you'd like. In my case, I spec'd it out basically to match my OG one, which also has a, a canvas micata, also has the brass rings around the screw there, and is also in a stonewash style finish, which by the way, I think I like the stonewash of this new guy a little bit better than I like. This feels a little bit more reflective, whereas this guy's a little more dull. So uh, that is the finish looks a little more visually dull. I should probably be clear when I'm talking about knives. So, you know, overall, I gotta say, this is nice. And in many ways, even these little details here make it feel to me that this particular knife is an evolution as well as being a size variant, right? It's clear that TJ has put some additional thought into it and has really done some some details here. By the way, one other little detail. Look at the lanyard hole here. The lanyard hole actually has cut out in the G10, or I'm sorry, well, in the G10 here, uh, in the micata here, that just allows it to sit a little bit more flush. It's a little tiny thing, right? But it's a thing. It's a nice thing to see. You could have just like brr, drilled through there and been lazy about it, but instead, no. And for a lot of people, a lanyard is going to make sense because it gives you a little bit more grippable length if you have very, very big meat paws and you are trying to uh, 
use this little guy. So that's very much a nice thing. Uh, so on the whole, oh, and then finally on the good side, actually I'm not 100% sure whether the price is on the good side or not. It's 265 bucks. So the price here is very reasonable for a fixed blade that you can get custom made, basically, to your specs, at least from his various choices there. That, to me, seems reasonable, and it's being made in Idaho by a very well-known knife designer, right? I mean, I think at this point, TJ Schwartz has done enough great work that he kind of deserves some brand recognition, if you will. Um, but that said, you can definitely get fixed blades cheaper than this, right? Um, particularly from overseas, you can get fixed blades that are very, very inexpensive, or or even just like, okay, this is the Monterey Bay Knives Field Trekker, just 200 bucks, but it's made overseas. I know that that's a, a thing that some people don't want to do, and that's fine, right? But if you want to go elsewhere, you can get cheaper fixed blades, but at the same time, you know, for what you're getting here from a well-known designer, etc., custom made in the shop, this feels pretty reasonable. So to me, um, all of that is the good right? What we got here is a really, really nice set of ergonomics. We have really nice little design touches all throughout the knife, both from an aesthetic perspective as well as from functional perspectives. You have very, very nice shadow boxing of the liners here, which is just a, a beautiful thing, and showing off, again, those little details in terms of milling and everything else that make this nice. The blade on it is very, very nice with magna cut steel, and the, the ability to resist even my being a complete and total dick to this knife, um, it, it has not really shrugged even at any of the things I've done to it. You have a reasonably nice little sheath here that is configured for pocket carry and includes a little clip that is a little bit of a pain to get open, but absolutely does the work. And on the whole, you can really tell that TJ put a lot of thought into this little guy and didn't just take big knife and make smaller knife. Um, you can tell that this is a different design, even though it is clearly a spiritual successor. On the negative side, there are only a couple of things that I have to say that I'm not such a big fan of. One of them is the little sheath guy here. So... I totally get the pocket carry thing for folks who want to love it, right? But as I mentioned, this is huge. This takes up a large, large portion of your pocket. And in many ways, actually, I find this kind of sheath, so this is kind of a pancake-style kydex, right? Where you have two layers of kydex, and it looks like he's very nicely burnished uh, the, the sides of the kydex here, so that it barely looks like two different layers. But you have two different layers that are held together by these little things, as opposed to a taco-style sheath, which I don't actually have one of handy, but where basically the kydex is full folded taco style around the blade, and so there would not be this side, there would just be a curvature on the back here. Now, I totally get uh, TJ wanting very much to have this extra little bit here, uh, where your thumb is, to allow you to take the sheath off of the knife, right? That is an important detail. But in many ways, I think I would have preferred had this knife had the clip over here, and then been taco style on this side, such that it can really tuck a little bit more carefully against your pocket right? Um, in whichever direction you want to carry it, right? But that would have allowed this to take up a little bit less space at the very, very front of your pocket. Now, there may be very good legitimate knife may or kydex making reasons why that kind of a taco style construction with very little border on this side and then the existing border and clip on this side wouldn't have worked. And certainly ergonomically, it might have been a little bit weird having the clip up this high on that side. That may actually be the reason itself. But the end result of having this kind of pancake style sheath is that it is just exceptionally wide in the pocket here. That is very, very much something that you want to keep in mind. And if you are not a big fan of pocket carry, this knife is going to drive you a little bit crazy, and you will want to kind of budget into it a different kind of mounting system, which, to be fair, won't be very hard, uh, like a tech lock or something along those lines that you would be able to. And by the way, I mean, uh, this is the, uh, the, the regular overland... <laughs> All it really takes is to take something like this and then put it onto something like this with a set of spaces, right? So it's not hard to do this replacement, to turn this into a belt sheath style knife, but it is very, very much set up for pocket carry. Um, and this kind of clip, I don't believe is going to have enough. Yeah, yeah, make as much fun as you'd like. Um, but this kind of clip, ah, there you go, is not going to have enough space under it to really work that well on a belt right? Even if you did swap it to the other side, it's, it's, it requires very thin fabric. This is kind of made for yoga pants, uh, or some, probably not actually, but yeah. So anyways, um, the, the pocket sheath style thing just doesn't particularly do it for me, but that may be my own style. 
If you have very wide pockets and you don't keep much else in the pocket with your knife, then you know what? Yeah, it's probably going to be okay. The other disadvantage, of course, to a pocket sheath is that you have to be very mindful as you are putting a, a bare blade back into your pocket, right? Um, especially when the, the, the target here is relatively big, right? It's not so hard to get in there, but you do need to be very careful as you do so. Otherwise, well, you're just dropping a knife into your pocket. Um, and I, I, like I mentioned already, and this is mostly just a uh, LOL sort of thing. I get why there's a vent at the bottom here. If this knife were uh, wet, you would want the water to drip out rather than to stay in here. But this is a pocket sheath. So there were implicatures, if you will, uh, telling us that you're going to have whatever was on your knife drip it out into your pocket, whereas you might actually want it to stay in the sheath in this particular case. Whatever, not a big deal, right? Um, Next thing, I got to say, this little Ulta clip is okay, right? Like, I get what it's going for here, and it, this isn't the thing that TJ makes, I believe. This is its own little affair, and putting aside the kind of preachy tea, which really really. Um, this is just a pain in the neck to use, right? And I imagine if I used it on a more regular basis, you can get it open with your thumb, but it's just not freaking pleasant to do so. Um, this is just not a very pleasant experience, and given I want it to stay secure, right? You very much do want it to be able to resist the pull of you pulling the knife out, although generally you're going to want to use your thumb to pop it out against that little surface there rather than just grabbing the handle and yoinking, uh, in which case you're going to give yourself a wedgie at the same time you have a knife, uh, which, uh, yeah, anyways, not engaging further with that sentence. This is a, uh, th th but I, I just, I don't particularly care for this. Um, I, I get it, I but this feels like there might have been a better way to implement it, but it's probably a small number of people making clips for pocket sheets, and I've had other fixed blades that are pocket-sized with even worse clip arrangements. So you know what? I, I can't get too, too bent out of shape about that there. Uh, and then uh, finally, on the bad side, like I said, um, this is going to be a little bit expensive relative to the other fixed blades out there in the world, right? You know, 285 bucks, I'm sorry, 265 bucks, and to be fair, actually, I, I should have mentioned this, both of these configurations appear to be 265 right? You might expect for an extra process like the coating, you might pay a little bit more money, although actually, the coating might allow you to hide some surface finish crimes as well. So, you know, it, I can see it balancing out. But ultimately, all of the configurations are 265 which is kind of nice. It makes things a little bit easier. But the... Uh, yeah, I, 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 the price, like I said, you can definitely do better elsewhere, but very seldom are you going to get an American-made knife by a very well-known designer at this kind of a price point, especially when it's done so functionally well. This has been a great little knife out there. It is very, very good. It's very, very rust-resistant. MagnaCut is a great steal for a fixed blade. Um, I have no, no complaints here whatsoever. Um, so at that level, yeah, it's pricey, but yeah. It's also quite good. So, um, ultimately, my final conclusion, uh, wrapping it back together, is that on the balance, I like this knife. And that means something, given that really this form factor usually doesn't do it for me, right? I'm, I would tend to, if I'm using a fixed blade, do something a little bit bigger, right? And something that would belt mount. But I gotta say, this ergonomically works really well. I have small hands. Please consider that a bias. Here. And I also like TJ, so you can consider that a bias too. But this really does feel like it is designed well enough that it does enough things very, very well that I, I have been appreciating it, right? I am not particularly appreciating the clip. Uh, sort of approach. I'm not appreciating the pocket thing, and if I end up carrying a small fixed blade more often, which to be clear is not something I super see happening given my everyday life, and the fact that there may be legal complications surrounding carrying what is effectively a concealed fixed blade, although one could argue that this is not particularly concealed, but anyways, do check your local laws, talk to a lawyer, not a YouTuber. But uh, anyways, uh, if I were to do so, I would almost certainly replace this little guy with a uh, belt-style clip. I think that would work a little bit better for my life and would feel a little bit better uh, in the kind of ways that I, I exist. But still, I like it. It is another very well thought out design by TJ, right? And that's one of the things I really appreciate about, uh, appreciate about TJ, right? The work that he does is by and large well considered. You look at it and you're like, yeah, he thought about why this needs to be this way. All of the details are there, and what he's set out to do, he has done well. It's a relatively simple knife in many ways, but the design sh shows through, and it carries the day. And for something that's being made by a small manufacturer, that is him, uh, in his garage, I gather, you know, 265 is not so insane, right? And you have the benefit of a custom knife from a 
like I said, pretty well-known and well-acclaimed uh, designer out there in the world. So ultimately, this is more going to be a uh, referendum, if you will, uh, whether I'm recommending this little guy on your feelings on pocket fixed blades. If you love pocket fixed blades, you should absolutely consider this. This is a very, very interesting knife, and certainly there will be more compact pocket fixed blades. There will certainly be more compact pocket sheaths. But this has a lot of great design, a lot of great ideas, and a very, very nice blade, which makes it all feel worthwhile. But if you're not interested in a pocket fixed blade, uh, or if you're looking for something that is more belt mounted, you'll either want to buy this with the understanding that you'll be doing something other than this, or you might uh, consider going elsewhere. So anyways, there you go. I hope this has been interesting to you, and that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now. May the Schwartz be with you.